Wow. All right, let's do our speaking practice today. Okay, so let's start with part um, part one first. Yeah. Always. All right, so let's do topic number thirteen. Singing. So, uh, man, do you like to sing? Yes, undoubtedly. Singing is one of the most obvious way that people use to relax. You know. Yeah, but like, I uh, ask about you, not people. You know. Careful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I myself also among those people. I always sing when I was when I was uh, taking taking a bath or when I was uh, learning, and that gives me relax uh, relaxation even when I was walking. Mm -hmm. So, do you enjoy listening to people singing? Well. In my opinion, it, it depends on whether they sing bad or good, you know, like some people sing, some people sing like um, they were uh, talented, you know, they were, they were talented and they song, then every single song they sing is like uh, the singer sing, sings themselves. And, <clears throat> but there are some of my friends who sing really bad and I do not want to hear them sing at all. Mm -hmm. Right, I see. It's about karaoke, you know. A lot of people they just love to sing karaoke in this country. Yeah. So, what do you often sing about? Well, I often sing about uh, some sing about love, or I sing about uh, my my country, you know, the the anthem, and also sometimes I also sing about. Um, Maybe some glory, the glorious history of my country. Yes. <clears throat> right. So, the glorious history of a country. You mean like uh, songs about history, songs about the war, and songs about things like that? No. Yeah. You know, like năm anh em trên một chiến xe tăng. Oh yeah. No. Oh no, please. So when and where do you like to sing? <clears throat> well, in my experience, I often sing when I was when I uh, feel um, stress. You know, when it when I was uh, walking, when I was uh, learning, or when I and uh, the best time for me to to sing is uh, when I was uh, relaxed. You know, like um, when I was uh, playing game or when I was taking a bath and I, and the place in the place I sing can be everywhere you know even in the in the kitchen in the living room or in my room or even in even in the what, what can I say in the in bathroom the you know in the bathroom yeah bathroom singer is actually quite popular you know yeah. bathroom singing and bathroom singers I've seen so many <laughs> So, is it difficult to sing well, do you think? Well, <clears throat> yes, undoubtedly. Um, some, for some people, they are talented and they have a great voice. And so that then, so, but uh, they still have problems to develop their talent. And, but when it comes to uh, those who do not, who are not, who, are not talented they have to practice a lot they have to learn about singing and they have to take some classes to uh, control their voice and so and so that for me um in order to sing well is a difficult task it is indeed a difficult task that's why we have something called vocal training you know yeah. vocal training vocal training <clears throat> and also uh I have heard people in the north, especially Hanoi, they are joining classes like vocal training classes because they want to be able to sing karaoke better. You know why? Because they want to improve the relationship with their uh, neighborhood neighbors, you know, <laughs> because if they sing so bad, if they sing so badly, their neighbors would hate them, you know, don't want to talk to them, something like that, you know. Mm, it's funny. Yeah, may yeah maybe. It's uh, singing karaoke is like uh, a culture. 
Uh, yes, a culture without any respect for the others, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, my neighbor do. They do sing karaoke when I was uh, learning, and that's caused some distraction. But I, I'm fine with that. So, but sometimes it's annoying, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, there are a lot of uh, fast food stores uh, around my house, and. Uh, they just um, turn on the cur turn on the um, they just uh, sing karaoke every night and until all the store you know, are closed and that's annoying. <clears throat> that's super annoying actually, especially yeah. when you have to do work and you cannot concentrate because of the noise, you know. And then the walls, the um, insulation, you know, it's really bad. Cái sự đệm, cách âm, insulation, sound insulation is really bad in Vietnam. So it's just like noise everywhere. Anyway, um, why do people sing? Tại sao con người ta lại phải hát? What do you think? Well, in my opinion, I believe that they give the attention to uh to singing means that they want to seek they want to seek for uh, joy they want to seek for relaxation <coughs> and also you know like um since the dawn of mankind people have found people have found people had found had found um bird voices uh really really great and they want to and they will started to uh, imitate the birds Oh. And um, also, I think that uh, that's the beginning of my uh, singing. You know, mm -hmm. like it brings it brings joy joy to life, and also it it makes life more colorful. I see. <clears throat> now, do you th you think school teachers should teach singing? Well, yes, undoubtedly, because uh, singing is uh, one of the basic one of the basic um, skills of people and if everyone can sing well that would be really interesting you know like uh, whenever people want to hang out for, uh, for hang out for some karaoke singing everyone would be really confident to show their skills and um, they would uh, stand out and uh, perform their favorite song and that would uh, make the party more in, more joyful and enjoyable mm -hmm. <clears throat> i see right so tell me <clears throat> do you want to be a singer yourself and what kind of music do you like to sing well personally i don't i do not want to become a singer but if I can, uh, but if I w I was talented, I would uh, definitely go to uh, the mu to go to music uh, schools and uh, learn about uh, singing. And um, in my opinion, I would I would love to sing about love, you know, like some sad song or some love song, and uh, that would give me that uh, would uh, give me a lot of experience and if I had a fan crew that would be interesting and that's the best thing I can get and but, and probably I would be really famous and uh, I can make uh, billions of money billions of um, Vietnam dollars per month and that's my dream mm -hmm. of course well you know not all singers become famous you know that fact right yeah, yeah, that's right. Come on, the world is not that easy. It's not that simple, you know. Yeah, so I, so, so so that I said probably. Probably is a is an understatement. It's basically overstatement, actually. Not quite, eh? It's an overstatement. Oh. I think. Uh, the right word would be. Possibly. Um, possibly. Yeah, possibly. Or maybe I think. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Không có đơn giản gì đâu. It's not that simple, you know. So many people want to sing, but very little of them become like famous singers, you know. Very few, sorry, very few. Yeah. So, what do you think of singing competitions? Like, do they help at all? Do you do you think there should be more or something like that? Um, like, um, what are singing competitions for? 
something like that. Well, I believe that seeing competitions bring about wide choices is of entertainment. You know, you know, like uh, I remember when I was I was watching TV with my family at deep in, in the evening, and um, the TV TV shows in the evening all covers um, singing comp competition, and uh, they would they would keep um, they would keep um, uh, the audience. To uh, chances to uh, vote for to vote for the for their favorite singer in the in the competi competition, and uh, I find that pretty uh, entertain entertaining. You know, like uh, we can uh, find some new talent in singing, and we are the judge. We are the judge to uh, decide whether they can come. They can uh, uh, come to the next round or not. So I find that. Singing competitions are really entertaining, and it's also the place to nurture some um, some pe some per some people with um, talent in singing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> right, I see. So, let's move on now, singer. <laughs> yeah. I know for a fact the Scorpio, I mean, I know for a fact the Leo people, they love to show up and one of the best way is to show up with singing. Huh. I mean, that's a fact, okay? Do not need to argue about that. Sự thật hiển nhiên luôn rồi. Công sư tử thường là có cái tính mà khoái show up, khoái khoe. Well, I have lived with someone with many people like that, so I know. So, <laughs> now yeah, maybe. I would like you to do thirty-four. Describe a person's home you visited that you liked, but you would not want to live in. Oh, that's uh, similar to some previous topic. Yeah, I know. Một cái nhà người nào đó mà bạn biến thăm mà bạn thích nhưng mà bạn không muốn sống nữa. Yeah. It's very similar, but there are some few differences. This is a person's home, okay? It's not a place you go there, but you do not want to live in there. Cái này nó, but, uh, nó, nó sẽ trực tiếp, nó chi tiết hơn là cái nhà của một người nào đó mà mình đến thăm, yeah. mà mình thích, mà mình không muốn sống đó. Explain why you would not like to live there. Dạ, và cái câu này nó cũng về cơ bản thì mình có thể nói hai cái topic này chung nhau được. Yeah. In nature, they are similar, I think. <coughs> yeah. And then, part three of visiting others, give chuyện biến thăm người khác. Do Vietnamese people like to visit others' homes? Người Việt có thích biến thăm nhà người khác hay không? Yeah, you can just explain, like, what do they do when they visit others? And uh, you can exp explain further. Uh, is it like a tradition? Or a custom? Có phải tập tập quán hay thường thống không? What do Vietnamese people do when they visit others? Người Việt làm thường làm gì khi họ biến thăm người khác? Think about having karaoke over, having party, you know, uh, playing poker or sleep over or something like that. Um, and what do you think about it? Like cái văn hóa đó thì what do you think about about that culture? You know, is it common to bring gifts when visiting others? Có thông thường người ta đem quà đến khi người ta biến thăm người khác không? Why why not? Okay, this should be an easy one to start with. Okay, you have some time now. <coughs> okay, please describe a person's home you visited that you liked, but you would not want to live in. Yeah, well, I'm going to describe my uncle's house. And it, it is a flat in Vung Tau City, situated in the south of Vietnam. And I had, I had chances to visit his house Uh, when I was uh, about um, 15 and um, that surprised me, you know, because his uh, apartment is uh, situated on the 10th floor and it has its view, look out to the beautiful beach and beach, also, beach, 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, look out! Look out to the beautiful beach. 
and mm-hmm. also I had when I looked uh, out in the, uh, to the window, I could see the beautiful and majestic mountain, and also I can I could uh, enjoy the strong wind blowing coming from the sea, and also and uh, besides. My my aunt's cooking skill is uh, extraordinary, you know. Extraordinary, like, uh, nha, nó là extraordinary năm âm thôi. Extraordinary. Ex- extraordinary. Extraordinary. Nari. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. Ex- extraordinary. Extraordinary. And I felt like uh, she could easily become a competitive contestant in the competition master chef. And the one thing that I didn't like about his uh, my uncle's house is that <clears throat> my cousin he studies so well, and um, he has um, achieved a lot of um, a lot of uh, prizes, and um, he has won a lot of competitions and uh, she, he turns every compet- competition into farm into farmer lake you know like he can farm some he can go to the farm and uh, plan some achievement for himself so that's the one thing that i didn't like that um it's contrast to me you know like um he can he he learn well and he can um he can Um, reach the first uh, he can um, compete for the first prize every every time he participate in any competition mm-hmm. but it contrasts to me that uh, I um, couldn't learn as well as him so you mean you couldn't uh, well uh, couldn't learn couldn't as, learn well as, as him I say oh, as well okay. as him so that uh, the thing that I didn't like that I can't be in the sp- I couldn't be in the spotlight and uh, so that I couldn't <laughs> I, I do not want to live in in my uncle's house I see oh see you couldn't be in the spotlight that's so Leo of you yeah À, sư tử lúc nào cũng đòi hỏi phải có attention attention và attention nó không chịu được nếu mà người ta lãng tránh nó yeah I know right. that for a fact I know it so well I've seen it so many times mm. It's uh, both good and bad, okay? Yes. Because sometimes I think you Leo are just like, you know, comedic. Mắc cười lắm, như là chuyện tranh vậy. Oh. Anyway. <sighs> anyway, fine. I think nobody is perfect. You guys are actually very talented as well. Mm. I'm not yeah. gonna joke. You guys are actually quite talented and you guys are the performers of the 12 zodiac signs. Trong suốt 12 cung hoàng đạo, Leo là cái người mà trình diễn. <cười> anyway, uh, part 3 of visiting others. So do Vietnamese people like to visit others' homes? What do you think? Uh, yes, undoubtedly. Uh, you know, when people come, uh, come, come to others' homes, we can find more about their life uh, quality. And, you know, many Vietnamese people, um, they are they stand out to their characteristic that is uh, jealous you know and they can be really jealous jealous and they would um, seek for something that um, they can compare with them and like um, when they come to a, another house they would uh, look out uh, whether his his house or her house is uh, bigger than their house or not and uh, they would uh, uh, they would um, yes observe observe that whether they live happy or not and live happily or not happily or not and so that they are curious about others life so i believe that uh, people vietnamese people do like uh, visit other people's uh, house and That that's because uh, they are curious about uh, other people, and they love, and also they love to hanging out and uh, go to their relative to, um, you know, like um, yes, spend spend time with them some some day, and that's really great for everyone. Right. Okay. Fine. Now, so uh, what do Vietnamese people often do when they visit others? Then, well, in my experience. Uh, 
people when they come to other people's home, they would bring a gift that could be um, some fruits or that could be um, a kilogram a of sugar or uh, a, a box of milk. And also, um, they would, um, you know, they would have to leave their shoes outside and uh, um, also they would come to the house and uh, chat with chat with the host and uh, sharing things um, chatting about everything in their life or maybe some work or or maybe some business uh, things you know and also many people only come to others home when there's something then when there's meal or there's some celebration uh, you know like uh, the, the celebration what can I say the old and the old is that funeral uh, celebration. Well, it's death anniversaries oh uh, yeah death, death anniversaries i don't know i don't even know if these things are actually a thing in the west but this thing is a thing in the east in the east yeah so they just come to others others home when there's death anniversary okay and <clears throat> right, okay, so is it common to bring gifts when visiting others? Why, why not? Yes, undoubtedly. Uh, this is a culture not, uh, which is not only um, popular in the South, no, in the West, but also in the East. And just because you know that uh, many people come to others' home to enjoy a meal, and uh, to spend a whole day there to chat and to hang out and to um, meet some meet their relatives and um, in order to not be shy when come to other house others house they would uh, bring some gifts that would, that can be um, some fruits or maybe a bottle of wine and maybe some food or maybe some things like a uh, flower you know and um, I think it's common just uh, because um, when they come to others' house and the host uh, present their hospi hospitality, and you should also bring some gifts in order to thanks to thank them for inviting us to to um, their to house. What? So, mm -hmm. so I believe that it is a, a great thing to bring gifts you know, every time when we visit others' house. I see. Now, of course, gifts giving is always welcomed. Always super welcomed. All right, so um, let's move on to another topic now. <clears throat> I want you to do something a bit more challenging. There. 37. Describe a time you made a promise to someone. Miêu tả một cái thời điểm mà các bạn đã hứa hẹn với ai đó cái gì đó. You should say what the promise was. To whom you made it? Các bạn đã hứa ai vậy? Là hứa cái gì? Whether it was easy or difficult to keep that promise. Có dễ hay khó giữ lời hứa đó không? Explain why you made it. Tại sao bạn lại hứa như vậy? And then part three of promises. What kinds of promises do people often make? Con người ta thường hứa những cái điều gì? Và với ai nha? Like promise to whom and what kind of promises. Like for example, parents always promise their kids that they will give them toys or will bring them to uh, the park, will bring them uh, to places, you know, but they never really keep their promises, I think. They're always so busy. Or promises to uh, lose weight or go to the gym, you know. Oh. That is very, very common. And people promise a lot when it comes to like, you know, New Year resolution. You remember that one? Mm -hmm. To make a New Year a resolution. 
năm mới uh, khởi đầu mới muốn uh, hứa điều gì với bản thân dạ năm nay em sẽ giảm cân năm nay sẽ đi gym năm nay sẽ <cười> And at the end of the year, they're like, okay, maybe năm sau. <laughs> no. Oh, Or maybe my... next year. <laughs> no. That's not common in my life. You oh, know? well, if it's not common in your life, if you stick to your promises, that is what makes man a man. Giữ lời hứa oh. sẽ là điều mà làm nên chính con người đã được tôn trọng. If mm. people keep promises, they will be surely be, uh, they will surely get the respect they deserve, you know? Mm. Yeah. Of course. Okay, so the question regarding what kinds of promises. Cái câu này nó liên quan về cái loại lời hứa gì con người ta thường là thực hiện, thường hứa. Like promises about what, you know? Do parents in Vietnam make promises to their children? Cha mẹ ở Việt Nam có hay hứa trẻ nhỏ của họ không? Hứa với trẻ nhỏ của họ không? Do children keep their promises? Trẻ nhỏ có th- có thường là giữ lời hứa không? Oh, of course not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they promise they will keep their room clean. They promise they will uh, achieve a better ban- better score. Uh, they promise they will study on a lot. Oh my god. Uh, oh, they always oh. promise things, you know. Mm, yeah. Why do some people fail to keep their promises? Tại sao một số người lại thất bại trong chuyện như lời hứa? And then why do some people promise a lot? Tại sao một số người hứa rất nhiều, thất hứa thật nhiều? Hmm. You know, sales people are the one who often have to promise a lot. Những người làm sale, làm uh, bán hàng, sale sản phẩm. And tư vấn bảo hiểm, oh my god. Insurance uh, people, you know, they promise a lot. They never really keep that promises. Đến lúc có chuyện gì là họ bỏ việc lâu rồi. Yeah. Well. Wow. In this society, promises is some uh, truth and honesty is something very, very rare to be honest with you. Mm. Which is very sad, you know. Are we living in a world of lies? Những cái thế giới mà đầy lời nói dối and dishonesty. Đây là nói dối và những người mà không có lương thiện, không có, không có trung thực, you know. Yeah, maybe, but, uh, maybe I'm just being negative, you know. Yeah, but uh, you can expect honesty, honesty from your loved one, you know. Oh well, yeah. let's say yeah. that. Yeah. Now, that's thirty-seven. You have some time. Describe a time when you made a promise to someone, please. Yes. Well, I'm going to describe the time when I had to promise to let my cousin borrow my phone for playing games. And uh, that, that was the time when I was assigned a task that was uh, helping him to learn English. And I was reluctant to, to take that task and um, so that uh, things, went on, things went on and I found he struggled to concentrate on his learning. And he just kept asking me about trivial things like how the world works and that's um, although I can, I can explain and answer uh, all his questions, but I, th- I think that he's distracted from his work. And so that I, I had to promise to lend my phone to him so that after he, his, he has, had finished his work. And <clears throat> Uh, from that moment, uh, I find I found that he can concentrate well. He can pay it. He can pay attention to his um, all. He can pay all his attention to his learning process. Mm-hmm. And and after that, after he has um, done his um, learning process, and I was um, and and then I decided to keep my promise. You know, it's just uh, an easy. It, it was just an easy thing to keep, and um, I was I was really happy because uh, I have I had finished my my task and successfully. You know, like um helping my cousin to learn, although he he was just he was at just a young age, and that was the thing that um, I really remember. 
that um, it gives me experience about teaching others, and maybe in the in the future I can become a uh, a, a teacher. Yes. Yeah. Right. In the, okay, but uh, I think your voice getting a bit uh, smaller and smaller. I don't know why, but well, hopefully it it remained that way. Okay. Wow. I mean, it remains. Uh, this at the same level I mean okay so what kinds of promises do people often make then well I believe that the most common one are those who promise to take an, another person to somewhere you know like a uh, lovers who promise uh, the boy promised to the girl that uh, he would uh, take her to this uh, to Disneyland or he would take her to uh, travel to somewhere when when they have money and that's not going to happen soon cuz uh, you know make, making money is a hard is a hard process and um, also when parents uh, promise their their children to take to take them to some uh, amusement park or to travel somewhere and normally they just couldn't they just couldn't keep their promise you know because um Parents are so busy, with, uh, not only just at work, but also at they're busy with housework. Mm -hmm. And also, there are some kinds of promises like um, um, that um, those people who take part in uh, with the war, you know, they promise to come back home when the war is over. And many people they couldn't kept they couldn't keep their promise because you, know, you know that they died they died on the war field and the battlefield on and the battlefield I think on the battlefield they died on the battlefield and that was really that was really bad and um, just uh, and I feel sorry for them and so that I think there are a lot of promise and kind of promise and there are some many kinds of promise that people can rarely keep. Mm -hmm. I see. Wow, there's so many different kind of promises. Yeah. But I never really want to promise anything because I know that I might not be able to keep that promises. So I never really want to promise anything. Mm. Like for example, people often ask me. Is it possible for their children or themselves to achieve a band score they won in IELTS? But mm -hmm. I said no promise, okay? Okay. I said no promise. Because I don't want to promise anything. You know, there are so many centers or places out there that promise good grades, but I never want to do that. Mm. Well, I want I, them I, to be I want them to be serious with uh, with their study. Yeah. And well, to not buy into the illusion, you know, không có mua mấy cái ảo ảnh, người ta tin một cái ảo ảnh. Yeah, just uh, the process, just uh, like a cycle, just uh, finish, finish the, um, gì đấy, cứ hoàn thành khóa học đi, xong rồi đi thi, đi thi không đạt thì quay về. Tôi chúng tôi cho học miễn phí rồi bao giờ đi thi phát nữa rồi đủ điểm thì thôi. <cười> Full of lies, I told you. A world full of yeah. lies. Yeah, full of full of lies. Well, it's like many... people love to hear lies these days, and then, of course, yeah. they themselves lies too. Very bad. Yeah. Now, so do parents in Vietnam make promises to their children? Well, uh, yes, undoubtedly, because uh, you know that. Children, they always demand something that is um, beyond parents' reach. But um, if their parents cannot uh, keep, cannot uh, do do that thing that they uh, demand, do the thing that they demand, they, they would uh, screaming. They would uh, scream, and uh, they would uh, make create some prop, create some issues, and. Um, so that pe parents in Vietnam they tend to make um, promises, you know, like they would uh, take their children to the amusement park or some um, play or some playground or some or, the, or to the zoo or to travel somewhere. 
but normally they would they would not uh, be able to keep their promises because you know that parents nowadays they are they are busy with not just their work but also with the housework and they normally they have no time for relaxing and um, uh, and take a nap so that I believe that parents in Vietnam they promise a lot okay of course they promise a lot just to make sure that their children stay quiet yeah and to not throw a tantrum đừng có mà lăng răng vẻ suốt ngày well children in Vietnam are too much I think always yeah. too much throw a tantrum they always throw a tantrum lăng răng vẻ throw a tantrum they throw a tantrum everywhere like on the supermarket in tantrum. public places you know and they run everywhere i think children in vietnam are just too much quá đáng lắm luôn and they need discipline they need to learn discipline oh thì luôn cái đất nước này cần phải học kỷ luật học lại kỷ luật oh i think this whole country needs to learn discipline because everything is just like chaotic everywhere you know yeah Well, okay, so do children keep their promises themselves, do you think? Well, I believe that they can, yes, un- undoubtedly. Um, we can see that uh, when children, they uh, promise something, I mean that um, they have the they have the belief that they can they can do this task they can finish it uh, successfully and their uh, fighting spirit is is at uh, the top level mm-hmm. and um but sometimes but uh, you know that uh, children tend to lo- tend to lose temper really quickly and uh, sometimes they couldn't just uh, cannot keep their promise and um that's just because um they focus on um emotion intelligence on uh, no emotion qu- quantity a lot because uh, they feel that they can confident to finish and to keep their promise at some times but uh, later they f- would feel that oh this uh, th- this promise is so hard i couldn't keep keep it and um so that I, because i believe that um, they promise a lot but normally they just couldn't keep them and also we cannot deny the fact that children they can keep some easy promises like um, they would uh, go to bed uh, uh, in the right time or they at the would, right time at the right time at the right time and or they would uh, just uh, playing playing video game for about uh, for a period of time and then uh, turn it off and i think that uh, just uh, easy time easy things that because uh, if they do not uh, follow those routine they would <coughs> they, they would easily you know like um the, their parents would um would uh, had a quarrel with them and that's not easy for them to overcome okay right so Of course, children promise a lot, but I think they they do promise a lot when they are under threat. I think. Yeah. Chừng nào nó bị đe dọa cái gì đó nó mới nó mới hứa hẹn này đến để mà nó to save to save themselves from troubles. Oh yes. Để đỡ phải rắc rối under threat, they they have to promise. You know, people do that a lot. Yeah. Why do some people fail to keep their promises then? Rất thật nhiều rồi, thật rất thật nhiều. Oh, I be- well, I believe that it comes to the uh, confidence or the sp- fighting spirits, maybe. Um, you, know, like, like, uh, you know that um, people, when they make promises, that maybe they are under threat or maybe they, are, they have the st- a strong emotion that they have to win this battle or they have to uh, accomplish this task. But um, <laughs> sometimes they just couldn't, they just cannot keep their fighting spirit at the top level. And so that they tend to lose the confidence and um, maybe they would quit this, this that task immediately. And that that means that they, they fail to keep their promises. And so that I believe those are the reasons why many people fail to keep their 
to keep their promises. Mm -hmm. Right, I see. So why do some people promise a lot? Like, what do they get out of those promises, right? Họ được cái gì từ cái chuyện hứa quá nhiều như vậy? What do you think? Well, I believe that in my well, to the best of my knowledge, I believe that they just promise when they feel that they are they are in trouble, you know, like uh, they pro when uh, the employer come to their desk and uh, present some problem and they would just uh, promise to accomplish their task and uh, finish their deadline and so on and maybe they just uh, promise to in order to overcome the problem that um, their bosses are coming to their desk and they do not want to um, have, have some quarrel with their bosses but so i believe that they just uh, they just uh, promise to keep them out of troubles and also they promise in order to uh, maybe in order to um, have more confidence to f accomplish their task you know when people um, take part in a competition they would uh, make a promise to win this uh, task or to win this battle and um, they would have more confidence and they would uh, they can have the reason to maintain their fighting spirit at the top level so that um, they promise to keep to keep their win so maybe that would help that would help them a lot in the future and so so that's why i think that they promise a lot mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, let's continue now with uh, something else. Try this one. You seem like the right person to be answering this question. Describe the person you would like to become in 10 years. Miêu tả một người bạn muốn trở thành trong vòng 10 năm. Mm -hmm. Trời ơi, hôm nay em ăn gì, ngày mai em ăn gì em cũng không biết nói gì <laughs> Well, a lot of people they answer me that I don't yeah. even know what I'm gonna eat tomorrow <laughs> You know, but anyway You should say what kind of person you are now And what kind of person you want to become Bạn là người như thế nào bây giờ Bạn muốn trở thành người như thế nào What you need to do is become that person Nên làm gì, bạn nên làm gì để trở thành cái người như thế Explain why you want to become a person like that Tại sao bạn lại muốn trở thành một người như thế and then part three of ambitions. What kinds of ambitions do people have and why? Có người ta thường có những cái tham vọng như thế nào? Mm. Like ambition about love, ambition about money, ambition about success, you know? And ambitions yeah. about, uh, say, uh, personal achievement, những thành quả của bản thân. Or ambition to have a perfect body, you know? Go to gym every day, something like that. <laughs> or yeah. ambition... Um, to invent something for humanity, you know. Oh. Phát minh là cái gì đó cho loài người, hả? What else? Hmm, let's see. Yeah, a lot of them. Trust me, there's a lot of different kind of ambitions. Um, some people that they have ambition to have like many different uh, beautiful lovers, you know. Oh. Có nhiều vợ đẹp, có nhiều người yêu đẹp. Like the king, yeah. Yes. Or they, they have uh, political ambition, you know? No. You know, political ambition. Cái uh, tham vọng về chính trị. I want to become a prime minister, for example, or the president or something like that. Something like that. Or redraw the map. The map. <laughs> redraw the map, like Hitler. <laughs> yeah. Like the Führer the of Germany. Yes. Yeah. Actually, he did redraw the map somehow, you know? He did. Yes. Dù có thua hết nhưng mà thực sự vẫn redraw lại được. Now, so why should uh, okay, so why should parents encourage children to have ambitions? Tại sao các bậc cha mẹ nên khuyến khích trẻ nhỏ có tham vọng? Think about what would happen if they don't encourage children to have ambitions. So everyone uh. would be mediocre. You know the mediocre. word mediocre, right? No. Mediocre. 
So let's check this word out. Mediocre. Mediocre. Tầm tầm bậc trung thôi, không có tốt lắm. Tức là giống kiểu tầm thường á, sống cuộc đời tầm thường á, nó mediocre nó tầm tầm, tầm thường. Tầm thường không không nổi trội. Yeah. If people do not have ambition, they would live a very mediocre life, very boring, you know. And uh, if bad things happened, that's when things go really bad, you know. Yeah. Khi có chuyện gì đó xấu xảy ra, do là không có động cơ, không có động lực để sống tốt hơn, cho nên là có chuyện xấu xảy ra, cái là nó tệ lắm luôn á. Yeah. Think about that. Okay. And then, what would happen if parents do not encourage children to have ambitions? Liệu chúng có muốn uh, đi du học không? Liệu chúng có muốn cải thiện cuộc sống không? Would they want to improve their life? Would they want to contribute to the country? Or they would become like a burden of society? Thì trở thành là một cái gánh nặng của xã hội. Oh. Think about that. They would yeah. be, uh, they would watch uh, funny videos all day and then don't want to work, you know? Yeah. Then, nếu mà đến nơi làm việc thì bật sếp như tăng tắt. <laughs> If they go to the workplace, they would uh, just uh, make uh, trouble and then uh, quit and then you know be a burden for the society. You know. Yeah. Hmm. You know, there's a lot of people like that these days, and it's very worrying. Đáng lo lắm luôn á cho xã hội luôn á. Very uh-huh. worrying. Tại vì sao xã hội vẫn phải nuôi những người đó? Because the society still have to feed those lazy people, you know, who doesn't have ambitions. Yeah. And now, sh- next one: Should parents interfere with children's ambitions? Các bậc cha mẹ có nên can thiệp vào những cái tham vọng của trẻ nhỏ không? What would happen if children have uh, what's it called? Unrealistic ambition, you know? Có những cái tham vọng nó không thực tế. Like if people do not have a talent, but they still want to become singer, for example. They would spend so much time, man, money, and effort to follow something that does not yield, that does not yield good result. Nó không có sản sinh nó được cái kết quả tốt. Hay muốn nói văn vẻ hơn là it does not yield fruits. You know, không có sản sinh ra trái ngọt. Does not yield fruits. You know, yield fruits. Does not yield fruits. After a while, and would be a waste of money, time, effort, and chances that they could have uh, given those chances, uh, could have uh, given those time, effort, and money to follow something else that is more realistic. You know. Okay. I have I knew personally a lot, some people who follow like unrealistic dreams, and uh-huh. and they regret that after a while. You know. Wow. They often regret it after a while. Hmm. Why? Like for example, when they were teenage years, they wanted to become singers and they tried so much, and but they did not spend time to study well. So by the time they reached my age, they started to regret that they did not study. Hmm. And they are just mediocre singers, you know. They earn yeah. not much. And because of their bad education, they don't really um, earn well, and then they don't uh, feel like they're being respected enough. Something like that, you know. Chào nghĩ sao lên làm ca sĩ xong rồi nói tiếng Anh như beep. Yeah. Or you know, like how uh, models, you know, supermodels and things like that, and people like that, they they answer questions in way that is so embarrassing, you know. Yeah. And the way they speak English. Oh my god. Exactly. There you go. That's what I mean. Should parent interfere? What do you think? But of course, it is not an easy answer question to answer. Nó không có dễ dàng đâu tại vì nhiều cái ambition nó rất là tốt nha, nhưng mà cha mẹ lại interfere tại vì không muốn con theo nghề đó. Like hmm. some Vietnamese people they they try to interfere with the children's ambition in a way that They don't want their ch- their children to become artists because they think that artists are so poor, you know. Yeah. That's they often right. do that. I have seen it so many times. Yes. And then, should teachers encourage students to have ambitions? Những bậc cha mẹ có nên khuyến khích trẻ nhỏ có tham vọng không? Chọn thiệt luôn á. 
hồi nhớ mà hồi đi mà thầy đi ta diễn piano á hồi cái đây mấy năm á cái toàn gặp những bạn bồi bàn gặp những bạn mà cứ suốt ngày nói thầy mấy em 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 mơ được diễn piano em mơ được chơi piano giống anh lắm luôn á nhiều người nói vậy lắm luôn á họ không có điều kiện học hoặc là ba mẹ không cho học well the Vietnamese society is sometimes very harsh in that I think well yeah. anyway Should teachers encourage students to have ambitions? Các uh, thầy cô giáo có nên khuyến khích trẻ học sinh sinh viên có tham vọng không? So it is very similar to why uh, why should parents encourage children to have ambition, you know? But now it's teachers. So what can teachers do that parents cannot? Đứng với cương vị teachers thì họ có thể là khuyến khích tốt hơn hay không? Like for example, I might know your strengths and weaknesses easier than your parents do, you know. À. Người ngoài nhiều khi họ nhìn là họ là thấy dễ dàng hơn nha người trong cuộc nha. Cho nên nhiều khi là thầy cô giáo lại nhìn thấy được cái điểm mạnh điểm yếu của học sinh tốt hơn nhiều so với bậc cha mẹ luôn á. Có nhiều lúc như vậy đó. So maybe I can give you better advices, you know, pieces of advices, pieces of advice. Advice không đếm được. Um, and I can guide you on the right path, something like that. Oh, sắp mưa. Is it about to rain soon? I yeah. see. Okay, you have some time now to think. All right. So, describe the person you would like to become in 10 years, please. Okay. Well, I'm going to describe my dream, and uh, at the moment, I I I am. Just... Oh, just a moment, please. Just a moment, please. Okay. I'm sorry, but okay. Now, please describe the person you would like to become in 10 years again. Okay. Well. I'm going to describe my dream that has become that is become a successful entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, and right? Entrepreneur, you know. Uh-huh. And uh, at the moment, I'm just an, a, a normal student with a huge ambition, and I have a dream that in the next 10 years, I would like to become an employer and uh, have some re- legal property, you know, uh, in order have to some what property. Yeah, some legal property. Uh huh. I thought illegal properties. <laughs> yeah, legal. And uh, in order to do that, I would have to. I would uh, have to follow a hard and really challenging career, career path. And uh, I have to study well. And uh, I have to do some part-time job when I was uh, in university. And. Uh, I will, and I would become an employee when I graduate. Graduate, and also, and um, after that, I can become a, a, an a, an employer, and um, to have my own a property that was billions of Vietnam dong. Oh and wow! Like corporation. Yeah. The, tập đoàn the, luôn. Corporation. Like uh, tập đoàn quân sự phát nơ. <laughs> <laughs> like and Wagner that, Military uh, Corporation or something like that. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And that means I can take care of my family. I can uh, I can settle down and start a family with my significant other. And uh, also, uh, becoming an employer mean, means that I can make a contribution to the development of society. And so that's what I want to become in the next 10 years. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I see. Now, so what kinds of ambitions do people have and why? Well, I believe that um, normally they would uh, um, have the ambition to um, have a stable job, you know, like um, have a uh, have a high salary and uh, just go back, just just um life and life is just a circle go to work and go to ha- and go to home and uh, something like that and um, for some people they have the ambition uh, not about job but about money you know they have uh, the ambition to uh, uh, reach uh, for example a uh, hundred million vietnam dong when they were when they were uh, 25 or maybe uh, were they would have the ambition to uh, reach uh, a billion to, to reach their first billion of Vietnam dong when when they were uh, 26 maybe and uh, that's the thing that I uh, 
I think that I think about when just uh, when people have the ambition to about money, you know, and mm -hmm. also there are many people who have some kinds of ambition, just like um, they, they they dream, they dream job, job, you know, it's not about uh, whether that job can generate uh, enough money for them to live, or maybe whether that job can uh, help them to provide in enough uh, for their for their family or not it's just uh, the thing that they have followed their dream and uh, they can become the person they want and uh, have the, have their dream job and mm -hmm. so that's the kind of ambition that i think that people normally have okay Right, I see. <coughs> oh, sorry. Why should parents encourage children to have ambitions? Well, in my experience, I believe that um, parents, they have the role to take care of their children. So, the role. Um, so um, they have... <coughs> sorry. So, they have the job. They have the task that they need to um, bring up their... Bring up the children not 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 just about the physical not just about the physical fact aspect but also the, the inner aspect mm -hmm. and uh, for that reason and for that reason encouraging children to have uh, huge ambitions is the thing that um, um they can encourage their children to be competitive and um, a spirit of competition can be really helpful for for their children in the future you know like um they can uh, become better than others other ch other kid other no other children other children, other other children and um they can win competitions and bring and uh, reach some glory and for that reason they i think that um having a huge ambition uh, can help uh, children in the future to have uh, a brighter future so that i believe that parents should really encourage their children to have ambitions i see but should parents interfere with children's ambitions My, to the best of my knowledge, I believe that it depends. You know, uh, when when it comes when it comes to children with uh, who are really realistic, they have the ambition that uh, that seems achievable. You know, like uh, if they uh, if they are good at English and they have quite uh, they are quite a good ex um, uh, ex extrovert. Uh, that means that they have, they are likely to become successful in some jobs like um, um, managing or maybe some management or maybe some uh, sales, some sales uh, job, or maybe it's, uh, become becoming an employer that seems achievable. And but if uh, some people who are introvert, uh, those jobs maybe may feels like a. Uh, not not uh, appropriate for for their personalities, so that I believe that that's when parents should uh, interfere and um, to discuss to um, introduce the fact to their children so that they can have a wider. A you wider, mean they can have a better uh, perspective, right? Yeah, they can have a better perspective. And uh, so that they can understand the fact, and uh, so that they can have a better and more suitable ambi ambition to follow in the future. I see. I see. Now, so should teachers encourage students to have ambitions? What do you think? Well, uh, yeah, I think that um, one of the most obvious tasks that teacher I need to do, just you know that. Um, my 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 mother always says that um, studying is like a running competition. If you stop, um, the other would um, <clears throat> surpass you. And um, so that I believe that uh, teachers who uh, who actively um, in, who actively included in uh, the learn, the studying process of 
student, they should encourage the student to <coughs> have some <coughs> ambitions so that they can have a, a spirit of a competition, a comp a competitive competition, competition, and so that uh, whenever you know, the children take part take part in any exam or maybe some competition, they can have a strong confidence and have a strong spirit of fighting so that um, in the future the student would uh, likely to achieve some um, likely to reach some achievement and um, accomplish a, a lot of tasks so that they can have a brighter um, future you know uh -huh. and have a brighter future I see brighter future indeed you know nobody wants to be a mediocre person or being a failure you know nobody wants to be that way yeah mediocre <clears throat> okay this is a hard one describe something that you cherish there's no part three for that miêu tả một cái gì đó mà các bạn ca tụng cherish means like you think about it with a lot of uh, you, you're very fond of something mình rất là ca tụng tôn thờ cái điều gì đó mình rất thích lắm thì mình nói về nó describe uh, something that you cherish like cherish a love ví dụ tình đầu chẳng hạn uh, ca tụng mối tình đầu chẳng hạn like cherish the first love or you cherish uh, um, a friendship or you cherish an object something that you are very, that you really want to keep it for a long time you know một cái vật dụng nào đó mình rất là quý chẳng hạn uh, what it is, who is it from, when you got it, and explain why you cherish it. Oh, something that doesn't mean uh, somebody. Something can be somebody too, I think. Why not? You can expand it to that way, you know? Yeah. In that direction. Yeah. That's more suitable. You know, like nothing is um, more important than a family or. Yeah. Okay, some time to think now. Describe something that you cherish. Oh, man. Okay. Well, I'm going to describe my lover, you know. Uh, she's my girlfriend at the moment. And uh, we first met each other when we attend high school. And um, she's, she was quite a cute girl. But um, at first, I, uh, I have no attention about her. You know, like I have no, she has nothing that surprised me, and um, um, accidentally, um, when I text to um, text to her the first time, and I found that she's quite a, an interesting person. <clears throat> and so that I so that's the moment when I found out that she has some emotion with me, but at, at that time I had no emotion with her. And so that things went on, and uh, I fell in love with her when I, uh, when <coughs> uh, when <coughs> I I fall I fell in love with her when 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 an occasion that I didn't I, I didn't know, and so that I have I I followed her for about one year, uh, and at, at the end I. I got her, and she became my lover. So um, she's quite an interesting person. She's cute, and she's also. She I don't use the word really cute, well. okay? I don't think it's a good way to use the word cute, okay? Uh, okay. She's uh, who's adult. good looking? Good, let's good, good looking, okay? Yeah, she, she has good looking, and uh, she's quite an adorable person, and um, she she also learned well at school, and sometimes she teach me a lot of things <clears> about. <throat> about things on about schoolwork and and that's the way I appreciate her you know not just my lover but she can also be my teacher mm -hmm. and and also um, I can teach her I can also teach her well in English you know uh, everyone has strong point and so that uh, when I when I when I strong in in I'm I'm good at English, but in other subjects, I was not so well. I studied not so 
as well. So that's that's the aspect that she teach me so much, and so that I appreciate her a lot. You know, so, you should try to be better in other things too. You know, because yeah. sooner or later English will be a thing that is so common in Vietnam, so common that you need something else to be able to stand out. You know. Yeah. So. so The way that she loved me and the way that she helped me in my life made me cherish her so much. And every time my every time my my my, my friends ask about her, I often talk so much about her. So that's the way I cherish her. Good. That's a good way to answer that question. Now <clears throat> let's do something else. Hmm. We have a lot of them here. Yeah. Nhưng, mà, nhưng mà giờ à mà thầy có thấy hôm trước uh, có cái vụ gì mà ông thầy bảo là uh, từ bao giờ mà tiếng Anh lại được trân trọng hơn những môn tự nhiên? <sighs> you know about it, right? Yeah. It's actually true. He was very right, you know. Nó chỉ là một yeah. cái môn học thôi, không cần phải thần thánh hóa nó như vậy. There's no need to make it like a god like, you know. <coughs> okay. Let's try uh, 60, 62 then. Okay, describe an interesting experience you have had. Miêu tả một cái trải nghiệm thú vị bạn đã từng có. Trải nghiệm thú vị nha. That you used to have. What you should say, what it was, trải nghiệm gì vậy, when it happened, what, why was interesting, and explain how you felt about it. It can be anything, you know, that makes you feel interested. Do you think that people need to have more interesting experiences in their life? Why, why not? Anh chỉ có nghĩ rằng có người ta cần có thêm những trải nghiệm thú vị trong cuộc đời họ không? Tại sao ta sẽ không? You know, life is some is of course very boring at a lot of times but we need like interesting people to make it less inter less boring you know yeah because that's interesting people make life more exciting and worth living just like art you know it makes life worth living oh tại sao đời phải quá chán you know tại sao nó phải quá chán you know And what can be the benefits of having different experiences? Giờ có nhiều trải nghiệm khác nhau trong cuộc sống thì có được lợi ích gì hay không? Think about what people can learn from those experiences, you know. <cười> oh, yeah. Okay, so um what can okay do you think that everybody should travel abroad anh chị có nghĩ rằng mọi người đều nên đi ra nước ngoài không travel abroad here doesn't mean like just to travel for uh, traveling or to travel for studying you know it can be for anything đi ra nước ngoài thôi nha không cần biết là du học hay là du lịch hay là làm gì cả <cười> okay so what can people learn from that from traveling abroad Okay, so you have some time now. Okay, you can talk about it. Well, we maybe want to share something. One interesting experience is that basically, I do think that writing book is an interesting experience. Even though for a lot of people it might be a very difficult task, but I do enjoy writing books. I just don't enjoy reading books, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. And maybe teaching is actually an okay experience now. It used to be interesting, but you know, I've been doing everything again and again and again, so I do find it less interesting these days. But if I find interesting students, then that would make it an interesting experience, don't you think? Yes, it does. Yeah. Okay, so, now please describe an interesting experience you have had, please. So, am I an interesting person? An interesting student? Well, I think you do. <clears throat> I think you are, actually. Uh, well, Okay. Well, I'm going to describe my first time playing the roller coaster. You know, and when it was about uh, one years ago when I visited the Dragon Park in Halong Bay. 
which is situated in the north of Vietnam. And I was re when I visited it, I was really curious about the roller coaster over there because it's so famous, you know. And um, um, but uh, I have to uh, queue uh, <laughs> for a long time. The, the queuing line was so long that you know I have to wait uh, for an hour until it's our turn, and it was really it's a quite a memorable experience. Memorable, I'm down here. It's a quite memorable, memorable experience. Memorable. It was it was quite a memorable, memorable experience, and so that when we got when we got on the roller coaster, uh, it went up and down and it moved it moved really fast and many times it's a it's a roll it's a it's go like a circle and uh, mm. it um, make us um, lost our heart and soul and, uh, <laughs> lost our heart and soul sounds it's a bit too much don't you think <laughs> yeah a bit too much but uh, i really and i and my partners uh, find it really in, in really interesting and we scream so much and that's really interesting you like, know like we were screaming so much huh? <laughs> yeah we scream so much and uh nearly we nearly lost our heart and soul and so that uh, i felt re it's really memorable and uh, uh, if i have the chance in the future i would i would love to try it uh, many more times because you know it's <laughs> really it's quite um ex exciting and um Everybody uh, who have just played it find it, oh, that's great, and I have to participate participate one more time. But you know that um, spending a, an hour uh, in order to play it for about one minute, that's not worth. So people that's normally not worth just it, right? That's not it. Not, it, yeah. it was not worth it, right? <clears throat> so um, normally people just. Um, experience is more once and and then go play another another thing so uh, but however i found it's really um enjoyable and uh, i would love to experience more many more times mm -hmm. i see do you think that people need to have more interesting experiences in their life why why not yes undoubtedly you know that uh, undoubtedly what do you mean by undoubtedly? Không có nghi ngờ gì nữa. Ah, okay, right. Undoubtedly. Yeah. Well, you know that um, <coughs> uh, people often say that life is life is like a journey, and if a journey has uh, no event, no event occurring when when we was on that journey, that would be really boring, you know, and um, um, experience uh, and interesting experience is like um, adding, adding salt into our life so that I believe that if we do not have salt in our in our life that would be really boring and we would uh, just uh, like um, experience a cycle a circle on the cycle of life the cycle of, the circle of life or cycle of life cycle là chu trình còn circle là vòng tròn careful ah. The Good circle one. of life. Uh, so uh, the circle of life, and that's that's really a tedious thing to do. And um, I believe that people should adventure more. more you, you mean know? people like, should uh, uh, adventure more, right? It's a verb. Yeah, yeah adventure. to adventure. Very good. Động từ to adventure. To adventure more, and um, also uh, I know that everybody is. Um, Advent is an adventurer, you know. Like we we love to visit new places, and we love to experience um, uh, new things, uh, such as uh, um, exotic food or maybe something that is uh, unique in our life. Unique, so, nha, unique. Nó là cái từ mượn tiếng Pháp nó thường sẽ những âm khác nha. Unique. Oh. It's a French word that English borrow. It's actually unique. Try this one. You can okay. see it. Unique. <coughs> it's actually unique. Những âm hai này thấy không? See, second syllable. Yeah. Unique. Unique. Có một không hai. Unique. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we try something unique in our life. So, <coughs> I believe that people should uh, ex 
should try more interesting experience in my life in order to not become a tedious person so that <clears throat> we can uh, feel that life worth living. Hmm, I see. So what can be the benefits of having different experiences then? Well, in my experience, I believe that um, it has um, a wide, of, uh, wide range of adventures. There are, there is, there are a wide range of... Yeah. Có, 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 there is, there are. Em vẫn bị cái vấn đề này nhỉ? Hmm. Yeah. Này cơ bản luôn đó nha. There is, there, there is. are. Có, là there is, there are. Okay. Từng có okay. là there was, there were. Sẽ có, there will there be. Is. Uh. Okay. There is a wide range of uh, benefits of uh, having different experiences. You know, like um, when we experience something new, that would be really memorable. Memorable. Memor memorable. You know, like um, people normally uh, just remember about our first time trying something new, and that would be really interesting. And also, it makes us um, to not feel boring about too much feel bored Wait, about feel bored about cẩn thận đi nha feel yeah. bored about do not feel bored about our life you know leading an, a sedentary life lifestyle for a long time that would, that would cause us some um, some you know, that would cause us to feel that life is boring but you know that Life is uh, like a journey, and people should move on. So I believe that they should try something new, and so that they can not only change their mind, but mm -hmm. also they can have new experiences, and um, maybe they have better chances to um, they stand better chances to um, change their life, have a new job with, uh, with a better income, and uh, also <laughs> maybe they can. Maybe they can uh, improve their quality of life in the future and settle down, start a family, and so that I believe that there are a that we, there is a wide range of benefits and when it comes to new experiences. Okay. Don't you think there are a lot of things to be learned by having different different experiences? Yeah, of course. Like so, you know. People can learn so much by being abroad. So that's why it comes to uh, the next question. Do you think that everybody should travel abroad? Why, why not? Nó là một cái trải nghiệm mà thay máu luôn á. Đúng nghĩa là thay máu luôn á. Giống như sống một cuộc đời khác luôn á. It's like, it's like a life-changing decision to travel abroad. It doesn't matter for what thing, but you should spend some time in another country, you know, different from yours. It's a life-changing um, decision. Okay, well, definitely, um, in my experience, no, no, definitely, to the best of my knowledge, I believe that um, when people when people move uh, abroad, they would um, experience a new life, <coughs> uh, lead a different lifestyle in a different, cult in a different culture, and um, spend time in a, a wholly um, unfamiliar country. And that would be really interesting, you know. Like um, uh, we lock out, lock, lock out our our server, our country server, and uh, uh, lock in another server. And that would be uh, that would that would be like um, start yes. playing games uh, since uh, the beginning. And that would be really interesting and exciting. And so that people can learn a lot of new things and they can uh, try new experiences because they are exposed to a whole new culture. And uh, you know that when people come to develop countries, they can learn a lot of things. They can, they can figure out why, why those uh, countries, they are so developed. And when they come back to their developing countries, They can make some contributions. They can uh, make use of the knowledge that they have gained in another country, and so that they can um, make some contribution to expand the national economy, and so that they can um, make some improvement to their life, and uh, so that you know they can help um, help their own country to um, 
generate more money and um, become an and become a, a developed country in the future and wait a be, developing or a developed country or developed ah a developed country very good to become a developed country in the future and that would be really record really uh, highly recognized hmm, appreciate interesting <clears throat> Okay, let's continue with the next one. <clears throat> you see, we are having more and more difficult questions. Let's try 64 now. Describe a time that you misunderstood someone. Miêu tả một cái thời điểm mà mình đã hiểu lầm người nào đó khác. Oh man. Yes, I know it's getting harder and harder. It's getting interesting, you know. Well, How interesting think... to làm làm gì? Hi <laughs> Well, I think it's uh, challenging or not. It depends on whether I have had that um, experience. Well, you can always make up a story. Remember? <laughs> yeah, but uh, make up a whole new story. It's not just uh, based on, on my imagination. That would be oh, yes. sometimes uh, unrealistic, you know. Unrealistic. And I, have, and I would uh, have trouble in fluency. Well, it would decrease your grades a little bit. Not just a little bit, but you might notice that. Anyway, <clears throat> so when's your exam again? Uh, the, the 22nd of July. It's coming very soon. Yeah. Well, my birthday is actually six days before that, so... Um, yeah, it's well, fine. Time, yeah, time flies and time flies very quickly. Okay, you have some time to think now. Okay. Time to talk about being misunderstood, or maybe that you are the one who misunderstood someone. Yeah. This is not about being misunderstood, but you are the one who misunderstood someone, and you have to talk about it. You know. Okay. Well, I'm going to describe uh, the time when I. Uh, misunderstood my my girlfriend you know um it's the time it was a time when she was still my crush and uh, oh. we, ch we chatted a lot until one day i felt like uh, it's not worth pursuing her and so i stopped testing her testing and um and for about three months and and after that i texted her again and i and uh, we become uh, yes. lovers in just one, one, one month. And after that... <laughs> wow, that, that was fast. Yeah, uh, it's just that uh, we have... Um, um, it's just, you know, we have reached the gap and um, we have some uh, understanding about each other and we and so that we can uh, become a lover. So, but um, um, so, um, at that time, and so, so uh, it's, it was not long before I figured out that she, uh, during the time that uh, we didn't text, she uh, texted with uh, another boy so much. And uh, this boy, he's an addict, you know, he has uh, tried addict. some weed. Là những âm đầu nha. Ad an addict. Con nghiện. An addict. And, uh, he was an addict. Has, and <clears throat> yeah, he has tried um, weed, you know. And that's um, oh, terrible. Weed. And that's terrible. And so that um, we had some quarrel, and I misunderstood that um, they have some like, emotions with each other. Cause you, just you know that uh, never know. a boy, <laughs> never a boy and uh, a girl they text too much. You know, like that. They text days and night, and that's not common. But. Uh, at, at the end, uh, we have uh, she has uh, presented all the things that happened, and so that I understand her. Uh, although at the first time I I misunderstood her and uh, we had some quarrel, but you know um, the problem is solved and we are happy now. Sounds like we are happy now. Are you happy now? It's <laughs> like happy, happy now. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Now. You seem to ace this question quite well. Now, so we have only a little amount of time. 
but I would like still would like you to try a part two and three as well. Okay. Try um sixty eight. Describe the first day of school. Miêu tả ngày đầu tiên đến trường. Mm, man. Ngày đầu như thế đó. Well, did you cry on the first day you went to school? Never. Never? Well, you know that uh, my mother, uh, she's uh, a teacher at my school. Oh, so. that's why. Yeah. So I was like the boss. <laughs> And you know, I, I didn't fear anyone, you know. Okay, let's try this one. This is quite a first day of school. You should say okay. what it was like, what happened, and were you alone with someone, and how do you feel about experience? You also have part three about going to school. What do you think about a child going to school by him or herself, or the parent picking it up? Anh chị nghĩ gì về chuyện cha mẹ đón con hoặc là con tự đi học? How can parents cultivate a child's independence? Cha mẹ có thể nuôi dưỡng cái sự độc lập của trẻ như thế nào? <cười> How should parents interfere when things happen to their child? Why, why not? Khi có chuyện gì đó xảy ra với con, để con đừng quá báo, cha mẹ có nên ta can thiệp vào không? <cười> you know? You know, um, yeah. I think Vietnamese parents interfere too much sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Okay, how do parents help their children deal with bullies? Làm thế nào các bậc cha mẹ giúp con trẻ đương đầu với những tên bắt nạt? There you go. Okay, you have some time now to think. Okay, time's up. Describe the first day of school, please. Okay, well, I'm going to talk, in, to talk about the time when I first take, took part in my primary school. Mm -hmm. And um, it was lucky that my mother was a teacher at my, at my primary, primary school. So I didn't feel nervous and so that I, I was quite uh, confident and uh, in, interested in the first day at school and uh, my mother uh, she led me to my class and uh, I found that oh in my class there are there are still some uh, some of my classmates from the kindergarten and um, um, I feel like it is my home you know like um, my teacher she's uh, She's an, a close friend of my mother, so I, she's like my auntie, and uh, I didn't feel anything that uh, uh, caused un, you know, uncomfortable. That caused me something that uncomfortable. And um, so the first class at school, that was about the, the alphabet letters. And you she, mean uh, the very basic the alphabet, right? Yeah, the very, ba the very basic thing. And um, I aced that uh, lesson because you know that um, my mother was uh, a teacher, so she taught me really well about those basic things. And uh, so, so that all the time when I was uh, at primary school, I was like the boss there. I always uh, stand out to be the first, the best, best student in my class. So. Um, That's a really great experience for me, because uh, um, that's the time when I feel like um, I'm a spotlight and um, I'm the boss of my class. So, yeah, that's a really great experience, and I would remember it until the end of my life. Okay, I see. Let's go to part three now. So, what do you think about the child going to school by themselves or the parent picking it up? Which one is the better? Is a better idea? Well, you know that uh, it depends. It's like um, when when the house of the student is not so far from school, they should better they should better go to school on foot, and uh, so that uh, they can not just uh, improve their independence, but also to help them to uh, exercise. And when it comes to parents picking their children up. Um, I find that it's a really safe way, you know, you know, because uh, you don't know what happened on the on the children's way to work and way to school. So we have to prepare. We have to take care of them and um, <coughs> lead them to school, and so that uh, can secure their their safety. 
and that uh, would be a relief for parents so that they can work well. Huh? Yeah. But you know, most parents they pick um, children up most of the time. It's because of safety issues, as you know, they're afraid that their child can yeah. get kidnapped. Yeah. Kidnapped, for... là chết luôn á, bị um, bắt cóc là chết luôn á, phiền luôn á. Yeah. So we don't know what happened on um, on the way to school. So parents, they normally they would have to pick their children up, and so well, that's a good thing, but. Uh, Mostly, it do, it doesn't help to build the to nurture the independence inside the, the children's brain. So I believe that uh, each uh, each way of um, going to each way of commute have their own uh, advantages and have their own drawbacks. Uh -huh. Right. You know, a parent picking a, picking children up like uh, up until they are in high school, they would be, you know, um, a lot of their friends would uh, giggle and they would laugh at them, you know. Yeah, that's right. Actually, I knew some people until they go to university, their parents still pick them up. What the? I was like, what? Really? What? Seriously? Then I help con con đón con trời ơi. Yeah. Like. I know that some people that actually go to their uh, children's, uh, I mean, when they study abroad, they actually go to their children and they cook for them for a whole wow. month. You know, it's like that. Wow. I was like, wow, that's an epitome. Đó là những một cái epitome, một cái đỉnh cao, một cái apex of, uh, yeah. shell of, of you know, uh, oh, what's it called? You over-shelter your children. Ừ. giống như là căm giống như là chăm bẩm uh, nuôi con mà ấm con quá luôn á over shelter the children you know yeah wow that's not good at all of course not how can parents cultivate the child's independence then well in my experience I believe that um, they should they should let their children to have their own their own decision you know like uh, for example so some in some basic things like toy They should uh, they should let their children to decide which one, which toy they fancy the most, so um, they can get that one. So instead of buying things that uh, they think like uh, it can help you to build your uh, intelligence or it can help you to uh, develop your um, logic intelligence, parents should uh, encourage their children to decide which uh, toy they fancy the most, because you know that the. The most important thing in buying toys is that um, the children they, they find that uh, those toys are amusing and is in, they are enjoyable, so that uh, I believe, so that they would not become bored so easily, because you know that some puzzle some some puzzle some puzzle toys mm -hmm. that would easily lead to um, yeah that would lead to um, What can I, I think say? the fact that parents let children solve problem by themselves is enough to cultivate yeah. the child's independence. Cứ để nó tự làm đi. Nói chung là cái cái cái, cái mấu chốt đây là cái chữ tự làm. I mean, yeah, right. the main okay. thing about here is to do it yourself. You know, like to yeah, yeah. Uh, to help the children to do it themselves. Okay, so should parents interfere when things happen to their child? Why? Why not? Well, I believe that it depends, you know, whether these things are big or small, you know. Like, for example, if uh, there are trivial things like um, maybe they f the baby they fall or maybe uh, they drop something or they broke something, the parents should lead them to deal with their with the consequences and the children should uh, solve them, solve their problems themselves and so that Um, they can build their independence, but when it comes to things like, uh, for example, the children they have had, the ch the child they have made a mistake, and uh, that would lead to a loss, a billion, uh, millions of Vietnam dong, maybe. <coughs> that would be the things that the children they cannot solve themselves, and they would need help from their family. So that I believe that parents should only interfere when. Um, when dangerous or maybe some uh, some uh, warning or alarming things happen so that would be the time when they interfere and uh, teach their children some lesson 
and they're like, "You should be taught a lesson." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh well, just joking. So, how do parents help their children deal with bullies? Then you know, bullies are everywhere. Even those schools, even in workplace or anywhere, you can see bullies. So, how yeah. could parents help their children deal with bullies? Well, I believe that um, they, to, they should teach their students to become independent, and also they should build in their student, in, in their child, the spirit of competition. You know, for example, if uh, somebody uh, attack you, you should not just uh, stand there and uh, eat eat the punch. You should know. Uh, at least fight back and maybe you can win this fight on yourself and that would be really glorious for a boy you know and um, also you should um, be equipped with um, equipped great, would be so equipped be equipped be equipped with, equipped with um, soft skills you know so that they can uh, not only just um, um, solve the problem of bullying by themselves <clears throat> but also they can get some help from other people such as a teacher or somebody like uh, around them and so that they can have them, some allies and I believe that those are the best ways to deal with bullies exactly I think it's better to have allies to have friends you know around yeah. bullies often target people who doesn't have friends yeah that's right but also bullies can shy away when their victims fight back. Oh, yeah. So remember that fact. And when they and then your allies are engaging the enemy. <laughs> I was like <laughs> Well, you you might hear that a lot of the time, yeah, in games. Eh? Anyway, yeah. that's it for today then. Right, okay. good practice, good practice. 60 okay. this is like 80 uh, no no um 68, right? Yeah. Good. Right, that's all for today. Good job, and okay, I'll see you then. You. Okay, if you wanna, if you so wanna buy my book, just uh, message me on Facebook. Okay, Bye. well, whenever Bye. I have some demand. Okay, thank you, thank you so <laughs> I'll much. I'll see you then. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, that's the end of my videos. Please like, share this video with your friends, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and press on the bell button next to the subscribe button so you can get notified about my new uploads. Okay. You can also follow, press follow my Facebook, but please don't add me on Facebook as friends, okay? Cảm ơn các bạn đã theo dõi nha. Các bạn hãy nhấn vào like, chia sẻ video này bạn bè các bạn. Nhấn vào nút đăng ký kênh YouTube mình và nút cái chuông kế bên cạnh để đăng ký kênh đó, để mà các bạn có thể được thông báo về những video mới nha. Các bạn cũng có thể nhấn vào nút theo dõi Facebook mình nhưng nhớ đừng kết bạn Facebook mình nha. Thank you and see you. Bye.